Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor and the topic of today's video is introverted intuition and anger and this video goes out to you, INFJs, INTJs, but also to you, INFPs and INTPs. This video is for people who are mainly introverted and intuitive and you all share similar stories and similar experiences when it comes to intuition and overwhelm and frustration from introverted intuition. And it's all in a sense because you have a primary way you want to engage in intuition that you all share. You all want to engage in intuition similarly. Now, NPs and NJs want to use it for different purposes. NJs like speculation and NPs like creativity. But generally, mainly, INFJs and INTPs both want to have this distance, this amount of distance and detachment that allows them to engage in and speculate about the world without being caught up in it. Now if you do get caught up in it, mainly what you tend to experience is frustration or anger. And when it's anger, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But when it's frustration, that's when it becomes draining. It becomes something that sucks energy out of you. And that is mainly what gets an INFJ or an INFP to say that they have become overwhelmed. When I'm asked to pay more attention to my surroundings, and when I start doing it, and I start trying, and I start trying to be more on, and I start trying to be more active, I notice how I become more drained quickly. I become rapidly really drained. I start yawning and people start going, why are you yawning? And they, I start feeling like this frustration and uh, frustration over being distracted in particular. It's a difficult experience. Like uh, presentness is something that is very counterintuitive to an IN type. Environmental scanning, stage presence, taking up space, showing yourself to the world, that is something that can become overwhelming. Now, as I said before, anger is not necessarily negative in this. Anger is typically a, an emotion associated with growth. When we're angry, we tend to get this energy from anger and anger becomes often a drive to grow and to challenge ourselves and to test out new things. When an INFJ goes into anger, they typically engage in and become more aware of extroverted intuitives. They start becoming more aware of missed opportunities, they start seeing patterns, they start seeing things that to some extent disorient us. And that's the thing, introversion is an orientation. It's how you like to see the world and how you like to engage in it. When you start becoming angry, it's typically because you are thrown off balance, you become unsteady, you become unsettled by what you see. You see a new pattern that doesn't fit with your theory, you see something that doesn't add up. You notice something that is difficult. You realize you missed an opportunity. You miss a shot. And to an ENFP, that's not a problem. There are no missed opportunities. There is only the next one and the next one and the next one. But to an introvert intuitive, it's a little upsetting because we don't rarely recognize opportunities. So we don't recognize them fast enough and we don't act on them fast enough. So we have a lot of missed opportunities in our baggage. And I want to talk about anger in relation to frustration. Where anger is typically an emotion associated with growth, frustration is much more inhibited and the quality of frustration is much more difficult to bear and to manage. It doesn't cause you to act in any certain way, it doesn't shake you up, it doesn't drive you to do anything special. It just becomes like this frustration, this thing you see that you can't do anything about. And that's how the INFJs and the INTJs look at reality. Reality is set in stone to an INFJ or an INTP. It is something unchangeable. It just is. And that's why it's a frustration. There, you see things there that don't fit with your theory and that makes you frustrated. You see things there that don't fit with your experience and your simulation of how the world should work. And you become frustrated by your inability to do something about it and your lack of energy to handle it because maybe you could force yourself to do something about it. Maybe you can go into it and do it, but that drains you. And that is also why it becomes a frustration because that feeling of being drained by having to do it, that feeling of pouring your energy into it, investing into it, that is a very difficult feeling to deal with. And that's also why we want to see reality as set in stone in a sense because that keeps us from acting and that keeps us from wasting energy on it. Now certain INFJs are more prone to this frustration, this overall level of frustration. And that is in particular the INFJ trees, the performers. Uh, performer INFJs that carry this 
experience daily. When you, when I went on stages, held speeches, when I was in this experience where I had to be in the environment, where I had to be present, where I had to get people's attention, where I had to be in the physical world and to participate, I had this uh, feeling of frustration and I had this difficulty and I was so constantly drained from engaging in and responding to and using this emotion. Really, I was in a constant stage of overwhelm. And to other people, they could notice that in me. They could see, wow, that guy looks frustrated. That guy looks not at all happy in a sense. And that's uh, kind of off-putting to the observer, really. It can become a little off-putting to some people. To other people, it becomes, hey, why is that person upset? And what can I do? And how can I help them? Or what are they upset about? And uh, here's the thing, like... Uh, it's not like walking around being frustrated over nothing. It can be frustration over politics, over ideology, over what you feel, what you think is important, what matters to you. So an INFJ3 will be typically frustrated and channeling frustration over something in the world that is wrong. Now it's different when uh, frustration rather becomes tolerance. Tolerance is really, really fascinating. When the intuition moves towards tolerance, it becomes kind of nullified. If you have a theory and if you have like this worldview and if you have this map of how the world should work, introvert intuition is like that. It's like a map. It's like this point of data and abstraction. And uh, if you move towards introversion and sensing, you tend to nullify that. An INFP or an INTP will tolerate introverted sensing. They've, if they see a map with clear data points where everything is specified, where everything has been set in stone and where everything has been written down and detailed and when you have like this uh, history book detailing everything that happened and an FJ or an INFP will be like, okay, okay, that's that, that's that. We'll tolerate it, we won't enjoy it, we don't find it fascinating in itself. It's only fascinating if it adds to speculation or to theory or to learning. And tolerance is also a form of anger. You're kind of, you kind of dislike it, you kind of don't like how it's done, you kind of feel like it should be done differently, but you tend to tolerate it. You don't feel engaged to move it or to do anything about it. Just like with extroverted sensing, you don't feel engaged to do it because it's draining. And going into it and doing it is an energy-consuming activity. You rather do it on the autopilot. You rather just let it be there. And you rather just let it exist. And you'd rather not participate in or try to change it in any way. That's how an INFP will engage in introverted sensing. Now I want to talk about introverted intuition in itself. Because I see the way I see it, philosophy and theory, it all serves one purpose to an INFJ or an INFP. It moves you towards balance and peace. When something bad happens, an INFP or an INTJ will always want to have an explanation for it. They will always want to understand it. They will always want to try to comprehend it. Why did it happen? And if it's abstract and if it's on a level that is difficult to comprehend, that is even better. Like That means you can spend more time on it and that means it has a level of interest that is higher to you. If something happens, a bad thing, a difficulty, a missed opportunity, you can always use philosophy and theory to try to explain it and to deal with it. And that's the thing, like with extrovert intuition, like the extrovert intuition is great for an INFP or an INTP. It gives you that level of novelty and change and movement and momentum. Things are changing, new opportunities are coming, things are happening in your life, even if you don't move towards that on your own. And if you can understand that, and if you can comprehend that, and if you have a level of philosophy that can help you understand these changes and to make peace with them, that's great, that's the source of growth for any of us. Uh, if you lack the ability to comprehend it, if you don't understand the opportunity, if you don't see it, if you don't notice it, if you don't know why it happened, that's when it's difficult. The biggest reason for tension and the conflict between an INFJ and an ENFP is because the INFJ is failing to understand why the ENFP is doing what they're doing. When an INFJ can understand it, that's when it becomes easier to handle. And it's really simple, it's all about coming up with a theory for it. Oh, it's because of that, or it's because of how the world functions, or because of that or that. So it's really all about kind of moving towards gaining an understanding and gaining a comprehension and moving towards peace. And really, in many ways, with peace, you don't want to fake it. If you fake it, it becomes introverted sensing. 
Peace is not the same as tolerance. Acceptance is not the same as tolerance. If you tolerate it, it's still a problem to you. You still don't like it. You still don't understand it. If it's anger, it's still not peaceful. It's still not going to bring you any change or it's still not going to give you any sense of inner satisfaction or comfort. So when getting to know your intuition, you have to look at it emotionally. Is my intuition angry or is it frustrated or is it dealing with some other problem? And just to start up a discussion, INFPs and INFJs do have a lot of differences in their intuition. Primarily in the sense that they have different fears and they have different worst case scenarios. They have different things that discomfort them. They have different things that confuse them. And if you want me to make more videos explaining this, feel free to leave a comment down below and to share your experiences. Feel free to start up your own discussion or to make your own video. That's all for today. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you guys tomorrow.